Hvala vsem, ki ste prišli in vsem, ki to gledate na Zoomu. Kjerakoli vprašanja se vam porujevajo in lahko shranite, ki bo na koncu Darko vas vprašal, kakšno imate vprašanje, da lahko odgovori. In zdaj gremo si pogledati malo Darko. Ti že koliko let študiraš v poslednjih časih? Bi rekel, skoraj 42 let. 42 let? Se pravi, pri petih letih si že začel študirati tele stvari najbrž. Bravo. In si pol zdaj prišel do konca? Si prišel do konca? Se ne moreš priniti do konca. Nekaj stvari zdaj bolj še razumem, kot sem prej razumel, pa sem še stanil čisto oprt. Ja, jaz sem te poslušal v zadnjiču celju, pa sem bil ful fasciniran. Tako da sem rekel, moramo narediti eno vdajo na to temo. Tako da... Zdaj razloštam, Darko, kaj se je dogajal s tem avtobusom tukaj. So, we basically had three different categories of people that were on the bus going into eternity. V bistvu smo imeli tri različne vrste ljudi, ki so šli na temu avtobusu v večnost. The first is a person who lives and rejects God's light and love, the Christ, the Messiah, and then die and enter into eternity. Prva je bila oseba, ki zavrne Kristusa in potem umre in gre v večnost. The second one is a person who is a, we would call a believer, someone that surrenders their life to the Lord. They don't run from the light, they run to the light and respond to God's love and then they die and go into eternity. Druga oseba je bila vernik, ta človk ni bežil od luči, ampak je šel v luč in potem umre in gre v večnost. And the third category is an interesting category. What about those who live and die and have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? Who may uh, lived in some remote area or in much of the, uh, of the world around us today, that where they grow up into a atheistic, a communistic, a Muslim uh, society, where that's all they've ever known, that's all they've ever heard, and then they die. Tretja vrsta ljudi je pa zanimiva, ker niso slišali Evangelija, mogoče so že veliki je deleč, ali zaradi drugih razlogov niso prišli v stik z Evangelijem. Kaj se zgodi z njimi, ki umrejo? So, tonight I just want to go through those three different categories of people and just give a little bit of biblical perspective, scripture and understanding as to what happens when anyone in these three categories crosses into eternity. What is waiting on the other side? Tako da danes želim svetopisemsko pogledati v vse te tri kategorije in kaj sveto pismo pravi za vsazga od njih, da se zgodi, ko pridejo v večnost. Ok, so let's go ahead and go through these three different categories together. Tako da pa imamo zdaj skupi čez te tri kategorije. The Bible has a great deal to say about eternity. Sveto pismo ima veliko zapovedati o večnosti. And many times it's misinterpreted this idea of the end of the world. We hear this a lot many times, right? The end of the world. In mnogokrat je narobe interpretirana ta ideja o koncu sveta. 
There's not going to be an end of the world. There will be an end of this age. Ne bo nek konac sveta, ampak bo konac te dobe. And a beginning of a new age. In bo začetek nove dobe. And so different things have happened from the Old Testament into the New Testament, and I'll just go quickly through those so that you can understand. Različne stvari so se dogajale čez staro zavezo, čez novo zavezo, hiter bomo šli čez to, da bomo razumeli. But this subject of what is waiting for us in the afterlife, or sometimes we use the word eternity. Ampak ta tematika, kaj nas čaka v večnosti. It's been something that's captured the imaginations of mankind since the very beginning. Je nekaj, kar je vplivalo na domišljo človeštva vse od začetka. Even the ancient cultures, the Egyptians and many of the ancient cultures, they lived their entire life on this earth preparing for the afterlife. Celo starodavne kulture, kot so Egipčani, so celo življenje živeli v pripravi na življenje po smrti. Egyptian pharaohs who built incredible pyramids and then filled them with with gold and with various things that they hoped to take with them into the afterlife. Egipčanski faraoni so si pripraval ogromne piramide in nabral tam zlato in drugo blago, ki so upali, da ga bojo odnesli s sabo v večno življenje. They realized that this world, this life, this experience is very limited and very short. Z vedel so se da to življenje, ta izkušnja, ki imamo tukaj, je zelo omejena in kratka. In da prihaja nekaj, kar bo doba brez konca. Ena od pogostih filozofij v današnjem svetu in tudi v celi zgodovini je bila Jajmo in pimo, ker jutr bomo umrli. Ampak sigurno bi nas morali skrbeti, kako zelimi. Posebno mi, ki verujemo, da smo bili ustvarjeni po Božji podobi. Torej pomeni, da smo bili ustvarjeni, da nikoli ne umremo. But because of sin and because of the curse placed upon the earth, these earthly bodies, they will eventually wear out and die. Zaradi greha in zaradi prekletstva, ki je prišlo posledično na zemljo, se bojo naša telesa enkrat obrabila in bomo umrli. Ampak resnični ti je duh. Jaz sem duh, ki živim v telesu in imam dušo. Moj duh bo živel večno. Preprosto vprašanje je samo kje. And it's interesting as we look at even the Old Testament saints that that we that we study who lived so many thousands of years ago. In če studiramo te svetnike, ki so živeli tisoče let nazaj. In Hebrews chapter eleven, it says that Abraham, who lived in tents, he went about living in this life as if it was a short-term, limited experience. He was looking for a city whose maker was God. V Hebrejcih 11, od 8 do 10 pravi, da je Abraham skupaj z Izakom in Jakobom prebival na zemlji, kot kar da je to nekaj kratkotrajnega in je pričakoval mesto, ki ima temelje in je njega ugraditelj Bog. Imagine, 3,500 years ago, this man from what is today Iraq could see the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven to the earth whose maker and builder is God himself. Predstavljate ta človk že pred tisoči leti, ko je živel... 3500 leti. 3500 leti, ko je živel tam v Mezopotamiji in ga potem Bog v obljubljeno drželo poklico si je lahko predstavljal in videl to mesto, ki ga je zgradil Bog. Isn't that amazing? A ni to osopljivo? That somebody from what is today modern day Iraq could have such a vision that it would drive, it would compel him in life. He lived a completely different life than everybody else around him. Tako da človek, ki je živel na področju sedanjega Iraka, je imel to vizijo večnega mesta in zaradi tega je živel popolnoma drugače, kot kar bi sicer. In Hebrews it says that Moses, who was a prince of Egypt, chose to suffer along with his fellow brethren because he was expecting and awaiting and looking for a greater reward on the other side. In za Mojza se pravi sveto pismo, da je se odrekel užitkom tega sveta zato, ker je pričakoval nekaj boljšega. We see that, of course, in the life of Jesus. 
who on the cross, it says, for the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. Despising it, he endured it. In je tudi za Jezusa to pravi, za slavo, ki je bila pred njim, je pretrpel križ. There was something Jesus saw on the other side that was worth all of the sacrifices, including being crucified. Jezus je videl nekaj na drugi strani, kar je bilo vredno vse te žrtve, vključno s tem, da je bil križan. We see the Apostle Paul who teaches in Corinth, to the Corinthians, he says, look beyond the things which are visible because they're temporary. Look to those things which are invisible and eternal. In uh, Pavel pravi v pismu Korinčanom, ne gledat na te stvari, ki so vidne, ker so minljive. Gledajte na to, kar je ne vidno in je večno. So this is a major theme throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament. This looking forward to the, to the new earth, the new heavens and the new earth. Tako da to je stalna tema Svetega pisma, Uh, gledat naprej na novo nebesa in novo zemlo. Because this present heaven and earth will pass away one day. Ker ta sedanja nebesa in zemlja bojo enkrat minila. The Bible says God will roll up the universe like a scroll. He will create a new heavens and a new earth. Biblia pravi, da bo Bog zvil vesolje, kot kar zvitek in bo ustvaril novo, novo nebesa in zemljo. Isaiah, five, 700 years before Christ, in Isaiah 65:17 says, Behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered nor come to mind. 900 let pred Kristusom v Izaji 65, 17 pravi Bog čez preroka, glej, ustvari bom novo nebo in novo zemljo. And Paul, or Peter, I should say, Peter, 2 Peter 3, is quoting Isaiah. And he says, we are looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. In 2 Petrova 3, 12 and 13 pravita, da čakamo in pospešujemo prihod Božjega dne, zaradi katerega bo nebo zaplemenelo in prešlo in se bodo prvine razžarjene topile. Mi pa po njegovi obljubi pričakujemo nova nebesa in novo zemlje, v katerih biva pravičnost. In Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 5, the Apostle John is, is shown this heavenly vision that, that Moses saw 3,500 years ago. John sees the fulfillment as the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven to the new earth. In Vrazodetju 21, Janez vidi vizijo uh, izpolnitve uh, te, te nove, novega neba in nove zemlje, ki jo je Izaija prerokval. And we see that we see a perfect, a perfect world. In vidimo popoln svet. Where there is no more sin. Ki je ni več greha. No more suffering. Ni več tarplenja. No more pain. Ni več bolečine. No more death. Ni več smrti. And in the center of the city, there's a garden with a tree of life in it. In sredi tega mesta je vrt z drevesom življenja na sredi. The same tree of life that we see in the opening chapters of the book of Genesis. Isto drevo življenja, ko ga vidimo na začetku prve Mojzesove knjige. Whose leaves are for the healing of the nations. In uh, listje tega drevesa je za ozdravljenje narodov. Is it possible that this is the same garden of Eden? A je možno, da gre tukaj za isto, isti edenski vrt? The same tree of life. In za isto drevo življenja. Planted in the center of this New Jerusalem. Ki je posajen na sredi Novega Jeruzalema. I believe so. Mislim, da. This picture here that uh, of, is a picture of New York, if some of you may recognize it. Uh, tukaj le imam sliko New Yorka, mogoče bo, bi kdo od vas prepoznal. So this idea of an incredible, glorious city with a fantastic and beautiful garden in the center, it's not a new idea. Tako da ta ideja uh, fantastičnega, slavnega mesta, ki ima uh, u sredi čudovit vrt ni neka nova. I believe this, if you look, I've been to New York, it's a beautiful city, amazing city. Bil sem v New Yorku, je čudovito, soplivo mesto. But it pales in comparison to what the New Jerusalem will look like. Ampak zbledi v primerjavi s tem, kaj bo Novi Jeruzalem. You know, when the, when the pilgrims left Europe and they moved to the New World, to America, many centuries ago, ko so ljudje zapuščali Evropo in so šli v Ameriko pred mnogo stoleti. They took what was common to them, what they were familiar with, and they simply put, a, put the word new on it. So York became New York. Tako da so vzeli sabo imena, ki so jim bila blizu in potem so ustanavljali nova taka mesta. Jor, York je postal New York. Jersey became New Jersey. Iz Jerseyja so naredili New Jersey. And Jerusalem becomes the... New Jerusalem. In Jerusalem postane novi Jerusalem. All things are made new. 
vse stvari nastanejo nove. And the Bible says that the kings of the earth will bring the glory, will bring their praise and their worship to this, this heavenly city with Christ ruling and reigning on the earth. In Sveto Pismo pravi, da bojo kralji vse zemlje prinašali slavo v to mesto, kjer bo Kristus vladal na zemlji. In Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 through 9, it says, And in that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together, the leopard will lay down with the baby goat, the calf and the yearning will be safe with the lion, the little child will lead them all. And there shall be no hurt nor dis destruction in all of my holy mountain. For the Lord shall be, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In Isaiah 11, 6 to 9, pravi, Vog bo prebival z jagnetom in panter bo ležal s kozličem, teliček in levit se boste skupaj redila, majhen deček jo bo poganjal, ne bodo škodovali, ne uničevali na vsej moji sveti gori, kajti dežela bo polna spoznanja gospoda, kakor vode pokrivajo morsko globino. And this is the heavenly vision that drove men and women from the very beginning of the Bible all the way through to the end of the Bible. In to je ta nebeška vizija, ki je vodila Bože ljudi čez celo sveto pismo. And it needs to be our vision and our passion as well. In to mora biti tudi naša vizija in naša strah. Because we'll live a very, very different life. Ker bomo zaradi nje živeli zelo drugačno življenje. If we start, stop living for this world and start living for the world that is yet to come, we will live very differently. Če nehamo živeti za ta svet in začnemo živeti za svet, ki bo prišel, bomo zelo drugače živeli. And this is something that the Israelites were longing for. All of the prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of this day when the Lord Jesus, the King, the Messiah, from the seed of David, would rule and reign upon the earth. In potem so hrepenel Izraelci prerokval so njihovi preroki ta čas, ki bo njihov Mesija Kristus vladal na zemlji. Let's go through together now and let's take a look at what has happened to these three different categories and what will happen in the future as people who die and go to heaven. Zdaj pa pajmo pogledati te tri kategorije ljudi, ki so živeli na zemlji in umrejo in kaj se zgodi po njihovi smrti. The first category is what I would call the believers or the faithful. This is now everyone from the first Adam to the last Adam, Jesus. Prva kategorija so zvesti od prvega Adama do zadnjega Adama. What happened to them? Kaj se zgodi z njimi? What happened when Abraham died? Kaj se je zgodil, ko je Abraham umrl? Or when David died? Ali ko je David umrl? Or when Isaiah died? Ali ko je Izaija umrl? Where did they go? Kam so šli? The consequences of sin is death. Posledice greha so smrt. And they died. In so umrl. And the Bible says that they went into, there's actually different words, three different words that are used in terms of death or, or soul, Hades, the underworld. And these different words are used in different ways. Sveto pismo omenja tri različne besede glede podzemlja. So where did they go? They died and they were bound by death, but they were, they were, they were in a separate uh, category, a separate portion, if you will, of, of death. They were bound by death, but they were not in torment. Kam so šli? Umrli so, šli so v podzemlje, v eno področje podzemlja, ampak niso bili mučeni tam. They were in what the Jews in Hebrews called Abraham's bosom. Hebrejci so to v svojemu jeziku imenovali Abrahavomu naročje. Sometimes they were referred to it as paradise. V časah imenujemo to raj. They were to join all of the faithful men and women that died before them. In tam so se zbrali vsi Bogu zvesti ljudje, ki so umrli. Though they were bound by death because of the penalty of sin, they were not in torment. Čeprav so bili zvezani s smrtjo zaradi posledic greha, niso bili mučeni. And so Jesus is teaching this in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. Luka to uči v 16. poglavju od 19 do 31. And he says that there was a rich man and there was a beggar whose name was Lazarus. Pravi, živel je bogataš in živel je tudi revež, ki mu je bilo ime Lazar. His name was Lazarus. Ime mu je bilo Lazar. Okay. Now, this is not a parable. Jesus was not likening this. He said, there was. These were real people. In Jezus tukaj ne govori prilike, govori o resničnih ljudeh, ki so živeli. And we see exactly what happened to these two individuals when they died. In se vidi točno, kaj se je zgodil tema dvema človekoma, ki sta umrla. Both of them went to hell. Oba dva sta šla v peku. One joined Abraham in paradise and the other one died and he was in torment. 
Drugi pa je umrl in je bil v bolečinah, v mukah. He was in Hades. Bil je v Hadesu. He looked up his eyes and he could see Abraham on a across a great chasm was a big division that separated where he was and where Abraham was. Dvignuje oči in vidu na drugi strani prepada Abrahama in Lazarja, ki je bil pri njemu. And you know the story. He says to Abraham, put a drop of cold water on my on my tongue. In poznate zgodbo je prosil Abrahama, daj saj kapelco hladne vode na moj jezik. Then he begged that a message could be sent back to his brothers, his family, so that they would not come to this place. In potem je mu ledoval, da bi en poslanc šel do njegovih bratov in sestr, da tudi oni ne bi prišli na ta kraj. Some teach this is a parable. I do not believe this is a parable. I believe this is a literal explanation of what the Hebrews understood quite well. Eni učijo, da je to prilika, ampak jaz verjamem, da je dobeseden opis tega, kar kar je se je dogajal in so Izraelci to dobro poznali. It was also referred to as Abraham's bosom and also it was referred to as paradise. So Jesus is on the cross with the two thieves on both sides. Abrahamo naroče se imenuje tudi raj in Jezus, ki je bil na križu s tema tatovoma na levi in desni. And we know the story. They were both sinners. Poznamo zgodbo oba dva sta bila grešnika. Both were condemned to death. Oba dva sta bila obsojena na smrt. At the beginning both of them railed and mocked against Jesus on the cross. In na začetku sta oba dva napadala in se nočevala z Jezusa. But one in the end became a believer. Ampak eden je na koncu postal vernik. And the other did not. Drugi pa ne. Both died. Oba dva sta umrla. Where did they both go? Kam sta oba dva šla? Well, Jesus said to the thief who believed, he says, today, today, you will be with me in paradise. Jezus je rekel tato, ki je verjel, danes, danes boš z mano v raju. So where did this man go? Torej, kam je ta človek šel? Where did Jesus go? Kam je šel Jezus? He went to death. He went into soul. He went to Hades. On je šel v Hades. I don't believe he went into torment. Ne verjamem, da je šel tja v kraj trpljenja. But he was dead. Ampak bil je mrtv. He took on the sins of the world and paid the penalty for all of mankind. Vzel je na se greh sveta in plačal kazen za vse človeštvo. In fact, one day, because this question is brought up sometimes, what happened to Jesus on the cross when he died? Where did he go? Enkrat so me vprašal, kaj se je zgodil z Jezusom, ki je umrl, kam je šel? Well, we can ask him. Lahko ga vprašamo. One day he was asked to show a sign, a miracle, and he says, I'll give you a sign, I'll show you a miracle. Enkrat so ga vprašali oziroma zahtevali od njega znamenje in jim je rekel, pokazam vam bom znamenje. In Matthew chapter 12, in verse 39 through 40, in Jesus replied, for as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Matej 12, 40 pravi, kakor je bil namreč Jona v trebuhu velike ribe tri dni in tri noči, Tako bo tudi sin človekov v srčju zemlje tri dni in tri noči. So it's pretty clear where Jesus went. Tako da je predvsej jasno, kam je šel Jezus. He went to the same place that everyone from Adam in Abraham in Isaac in Jacob in Moses in the prophets, they all went to the same place. Tako da šel je na isto mesto, kjer so bili Abraham in Mojzes in drugi preroki. And an interesting happened when he rose. In zanimiva stvar se je zgodila, ko je vstal od mrtvi. The Bible says that when Jesus was risen from the dead, He emptied Abraham's bosom, and all those that were there were raised with him. Biblia pravi, da ko je vstal od mrtvih, je izpraznil to področje, ko se imenuje Abrahamovo naročje, in so vstal od mrtvih. And they were presented to God the Father as the first fruits of his resurrected work. In jih je predstavil Bogu v očetu kot prve sadove ustajenja. It's interesting, in Matthew chapter 27, As Matthew is giving the account of what took place at the crucifixion, resurrection. In Matthew 27:51. Zanimivo Mateju 7:21. Kaj se je zgodilo pri pri Jezusovi smrti? When Jesus died and declared, "It is finished, paid in full." Ko je Jezus umrl in je naznano dokončano je, popolno ma je plačano. The veil that stood before the ark of the of the covenant in the temple, in the most holy place of the temple, was ripped from top to bottom. Zagrinjalo, ki je v templju ločevalo najsvetejši prostor od ostalega templja, se je pretrgalo na dvoje od vrha do tav. And a mighty, mighty earthquake shook the nation, shook the city. In mogočen potres je stresu mesto. 
So much so that graves were being broken open all over Jerusalem. Se tako močno, da so bili grobovi odprti na različnih krajih v Jeruzalemu. And three days later, when Jesus rose, in tri dni kasneje, ko je Jezus ustal, all these, all these saints started rising, resurrecting and coming up out of the tombs and began walking around Jerusalem. Could you so, imagine? Mnogi te svetniki ustali, bili obojeni od mrtvih in šli ven iz grobnic in se sprehajali po Jeruzalemu. How is that for unbelievers who couldn't believe? Kaj mislite, da so na, na to rekli neverniki, ki niso mogli verjeti? Ja. Yeah. Okay, well, they, they, the, disciples, the disciples stole his body, so that explains that. Well, how do you explain, you know, uh, all of these prophets and saints walking around who've been dead for hundreds of years? Ka so probali razložiti Jezusovo ustajenje s tem, da so učenci ukradali njegovo telo, kaj pa vsi te svetniki stari stotine let, ki so hodili po Jeruzalemu. And then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom, and a earth quaked. And, rocked, and rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and they came out of their graves after his resurrection, and they went into the holy city Jerusalem and appeared to many. Zagrinjalo v templu se je pretrgalo na dvoje od vrha do tal, zemlja se je stresla, skale so se razpočile, grobovi so se odprli, in veliko teles svetih, ki so zaspali, je bilo obojenih. Po njegovi obuditvi so šli iz grobov in prišli v sveto mesto, ter se prikazali mnogim. Jesus preached captivity to the captives and he proclaimed the gospel and when he rose, he rose, he took the keys of death, hell and the grave and he emptied Abraham's bosom. Jezus je oznanil svobodo etnikom in uh, je vzel ključe uh, pekla in smrti in je spraznil peku uh, ta del Abrahamovo naroče in vstal od mrtvih. Now what happens to believers who die in Christ? Where do they go? Kaj pa se zdaj zgodi z vernimi, ki umrejo v Kristusu? Kam grejo Af- oni? After the resurrection, everyone that has believed and trusted in the Lord for the last 2,000 years, where do they go when they die? Po ustajenju, vsi od takrat 2,000 let, uh, ki umrejo v veri v Jezusa, kam grejo oni? Obviously, they are no longer bound by death. Očitno niso več zvezani sa smrtjo. As Christ rose, Paul says that we rose with him. Ker je Kristus ustal, Pavel pravi, da smo mi ustali skupaj z njim od mrtvih. Past, present and future. V preteklosti, sedanjosti in prihodnosti. So this is now the category. What happens from those from the resurrection, the faithful, from the resurrection of Christ to his second coming? Where, where do they go? Torej, kaj se zgodi s to kategorijo zvestih Bogu, ki uh, umrejo od Kristusovega ustajenja, do njegovega drugega prihoda. No surprise. I don't Ni, think to you. Mislim da vam ne bo presenečenje. They go to the interim heaven. Grejo v nebesa v tem umesnem času. Now I very clearly call it a interim heaven because a lot of people think that that's that's where we will spend the rest of eternity. We will not. Namenu ma to imenujem prehodna nebesa zato ker veliko ljudi misel da bomo tam preživeli celo večnost, ne. Ask most Christians today where will you spend eternity? Uh, kot večina kristijanov danes, kje, kje boš preživel večnost? And what will they say? K, uh, če jih vprašaš, kaj bo jo rekel? Heaven! V nebesih. Then I have to ask the second question. What will you be doing in heaven for the rest? In pol vprašam naslednje vprašanje. Kaj boš pa delil v nebesih? In žal mi je, da, da moram reči, nimajo pojma. <laughs> in in yeah. ne vajo, nimajo pojma. The Bible says that when we die now, we immediately go to be with Christ. Sveto pismo pravi, da ko umremo zdaj, takoj gremo k Kristusu. In John 14:2, in my father's house are many rooms. If it was not so, I would tell you. I will go and prepare a place for you. Jana 14:2, Jezus pravi, v hiši mojega očeta je veliko bivališč. Če bi ne bilo tako, ali bi vam rekel, odhajam, da vam pripravim prostor. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. V drugi Korinčanom 5 pravi, da ko smo uh, uh, izseljeni iz telesa, smo priseljeni v gospodu. In Philippians, he tells the Philippian church, he says, I'm torn between two things. He says, I long to go to be with the Lord. Pavel pravi Filipljanom ena, da sem razpet med dvojim. Uh, said, želim si iti gospodu. But for your sake, it's better that I stay. Ampak zaradi vas je boljše, da ostanem v telesu. So Paul knew perfectly well that when he dies, he immediately will go to be with the Lord. Tako da Pavel je z gotovostjo vedel, da ko umre, gre tako je gospodom. To the Thessalonians he writes in chapter 4. 
Tesaloničanom piše v prvem pismu četrto poglavje. He says he says that we believe that when Jesus returns that God will bring him with him back the believers who have died so that we will be with the Lord forever so encourage each other with these words. 14. vrstica, če nam reč verujemo da je Jezus umrl in vstal, bo Bog tiste, ki so zaspali prek Jezusa, privedel skupaj z njim in tako bomo zmeraj z Gospodom. S temi besedami se torej to ležite med seboj. So Paul knew very perfectly well for those who are alive when Christ returns there will be those who are alive on the earth. Ko da bojo eni, ko bojo živi, ko se Kristus vrne. He knows perfectly well that heaven will empty, the interim heaven will empty and the Lord will come back with his saints. In ta začasna nebesa bojo izpraznena in gospod bo prišel dol za svojimi svetniki. And both they and we which are alive and remain will receive glorified bodies such as our Lord has. In tako oni, ko kar mi bomo prejeli poveličena telesa, ko kar ga ima Jezus. And this is popularly referred to as the rapture. In ta dogodek popularno imenuje v nebuzetje. The Bible calls it the resurrection, the first resurrection. The resurrection of the dead. Sveto pismo pa pravi, da je to prvo ustajenje. So we see that the saints are in heaven. Vidimo, da so zdaj svetniki v nebesih. Jude says that when the Lord returns, he'll return with thousands, ten thousands of his saints. Juda pravi, da ko se bo gospod vrnil, bo prišel z deset tisočimi tisoče osvetnikov. John sees the new Jerusalem with the bride on it, coming down from heaven to earth. Where were the saints? They were in heaven. But they will eventually come to the earth, the new earth. In Janes vidi novi Jeruzalem, ki pride iz nebes na zemljo, kje so torej v končni fazi svetniki na novi zemlji. So the ultimate destination is not heaven, our ultimate destination will be the new earth. Tako da končna postaja ne bo nebesa, ampak nova zemlja. God's purposes and plans do not change. He doesn't have a plan B. He has only plan A. Boži nameni na črti se ne spremenijo. On ima samo na črt A. He created mankind to live on the earth. On je ustvaril človeka, da živi na zemlji. And in the end, glorified man will live on a new earth. In na koncu bo poveličani človek živel na novi zemlji. Infinitely better than anything that Adam and Eve experienced even before the fall. Neskončno bolje, kot kar celo to, kar sta Adam in Eva izkušala pred pat samo greh. So that's the first category. Those who are believers who died as believers, died in faith. Tukaj je ta kategorija verniki, ki so umrli v veri. Prior to the cross, they went to hell, Abraham's bosom. Pred križem so šli v Abrahamovo naročje, v ta del pekla. And they joined Jesus in the resurrection, his resurrection. In so se pridružali Jezusu v njegovmu ustajenju. After the cross, believers who die go immediately to interim heaven. Po križu verniki grejo po smrti takoj v Bože prisutnosti. Now, what happens to unbelievers who die? Kaj pa se zgodi z neverniki, ki umrejo? Those who have intentionally, deliberately rejected God. Te, ki so namerno zavrnili Boga. Those who never, did not run to the light in this world, they always ran from the light. Te, ki na svetu nakoli niso šli k luči, ampak so vedno bežali stran od luči. Jesus said, this is the condemnation. This will be the judgment call. He says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Jezus je rekel, da to je obsodba, ker Bog je tako ljubil svet, da je dal svojega edinorojenega sina. In the next verses are very important. In naslednji vrstice so zelo pomembne. He says this, Jezus said, this is the condemnation. This will be the judgment call of guilty one day in the courts of heaven. Pravi, da to je obsodba na končnem sodišču v nebesih. And that is this. There's two categories of people. In to je naslednje, dve kategorije ljudisto. When they encounter and meet Christ, te, ki so se srečali s Kristusom, one category will run to the light, eni bojo bežali k luči, and the other category will run away from Christ. Eni pa bojo bežali stran od Kristusa. Just like the two thieves on both sides of Jesus on the cross. Koko kar dva tatova, ki sta bila križena skupaj z Jezusom. Both encountered the Christ. Oba dva sta se srečali s Kristusom. One chose to repent and believe. Eden se je odločil, da se spokori in veruje. The other one died in rebellion. Eden pa je umrl v uporništvo. Big difference between the two. Velika razlika med njima dvima. Big difference between those who had been deceived and those that are deceivers. Velika razlika je med tistimi, ki so bili prevarani in temi, ki so varali druge. 
So there is a category certainly both of the angelic realm that have rebelled, openly rebelled against the creator God. Obstaja tudi kategorija angelov, ki so se odkrito uprli uh, Bogu stvarniku. The Bible says that hell as a punal system, as a jail system was created to hold them and retain them in chains of darkness until final judgment. In Sveto pismo pravi, da je uh, pekel kot nek zaporniški sistem ki drži te uporniške angele do konca do končne sodbe. But now fallen man can also choose to join in the rebellion. Ampak zdaj se tudi padli človek lahko odloči da se pridruži njihovemu uporu. And many have. In mnogi so se odločili za to. From Cain in the garden, od Kaina v, v vrtu, all the way through the one thief on the cross, vse do tistega drugega tatu na križu. All the way to this present day. In vse do današnjega dne. Multitudes are accepting or rejecting Christ. Množice bodi si sprejmejo ali zavrnejo Kristusa. So the second category is the unbelievers, the, the Bible calls them wicked, they calls them unfaithful, calls them many things. But this is now everybody that died from the first Adam, from Cain, all the way through to final judgment. Where do they go? Tako da ta druga kategorija nevernikov, ki so zavrnili Boga od prvega Adama do končne sodbe, kam grejo oni? Of course, the Bible teaches and Jesus teaches on this extensively. Sveto pismo veliko uči o tem. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says, Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Matej 10, 28 pravi, Ne bojte se tistih, ki umorijo telo, duše pa ne morejo umoriti. Bojte se rajši tistega, ki more dušo in telo pogubiti v peklenski dolini. Matthew 25, Jesus says, And when the king will return to those on the left he will say away with you you cursed ones into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Matej 25:41:40 daj poreče tudi tistim ki bodo na levici proči spred mene prekleti v večni ogenj ki je pripravljen hudiču in njegovim angelom. So it was hell was not created for man but man can certainly choose choose to 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 join in the rebellion and that's where they'll be put in prison until final judgment. Pekel ni bil ustvarjen za človeka, ampak človek se lahko odloči, da se pridruži um, temu uporu in je zadržan tam noter do končne sodbe. One of the most incredible parables as Jesus was teaching on the subject of the end of the age, judgment in the end of the age, is found in the parable of the wheat and the tares. Ena izjemna prilika, uh, v kateri je Jezus učil o končni sodbi, je prilika o pšenici in ljulki. This is found in Matthew chapter 13. And Jesus gives the parable and fortunately he gives the interpretation as well. In Jesus pove priliko in na srečo pove tudi razlago. He says, and this is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked from amongst the righteous, throwing the wicked into a fiery furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand these things? In razlaga je to, tako bo ob koncu sveta prišli bojo angeli in ločili hudobne od pravičnih, pahnili jih bodo v ognjeno peč, tam bo jok in škripanje zobmi. Ste doumeli vse to. In Revelation chapter 20 we see verses 13 and 14 and the sea gave up the dead, those that were in it, the dead and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and then each person who judged according to what he has done, and then hell and Hades was thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Razodetje 2013 do 14 more je vrnilo mrtve, ki so bili v njem, tudi smrt in podzemlje sta vrnila mrtve, ki sta jih hranila, vsak je bil sojen po svojih delih. Na to sta bila smrt in podzemlje vrženo v ognjeno jezero, to je druga smrt ognjeno jezero. So obviously there will come a day after final judgment in which this penal system, this jail system will no longer be needed. Uh, tako da očitno pride čas, ko ta kaznilnica, ta začasni zapor ne bo več potreben. Half of soul Hades and death was closed down and shut down by God and Abraham's bosom was no longer needed. Polovico tega podzemlja je Bog po Jezusovem ustajenju zaprl uh, in spraznil in ni bil več potreben. There is coming a day, final judgment where the second half of hell will be emptied and we will no longer need a penal system, a jail system that will be abolished. In pride čas tudi, ko tudi ta uh, drugi del pekla bo izpraznen, uh, ker bodo vsi prišli na sodbo in ta kaznilnica bo, bo vržena v ognjeno jezero. 
So just as the interim heaven is temporary, tako da tako kakor so začasna nebe, umestna nebesa začasna, the interim hell is also temporary. Je ta začasni pak kot tudi neki kar bo minil. Sinners will not spend eternity in hell. Grešniki ne bodo preživeli večnosti v peklu. The second death is the lake of fire. That will be the final destruction of the wicked. Satan and his rebellion to include mankind. Druga smrt, ognjeno jezero je ta končna kazen, kjer bojo uh, Satan in njegovi uh, souporniki preživeli večnost. Every single day, 250,000 people go into either interim heaven or interim hell. Vsak dan uh, približno 200 tisoč, 250 tisoč ljudi umre in grejo bodi si uh, v Božjo prisotnost, bodi si v peku. Is this an important subject? Je to pomembna tema. I know most people would rather talk about the soccer game tonight. I know Clemen was talking about the soccer Vem, game. Vem, da bi večina ljudi rajč se pogovarjala o fuzbalu danes. In America alone, every one, for every one person who believes that they are going to go to hell, 120 people believe they're going to go to heaven. Uh, v Ameriki za vsako osebo, ki verjame, da bo šla v peku, jih 120 verjame, da bojo šli v nebesa. And of course, America has a much bigger so-called Christian population. V Ameriki je pač tok večja krščanska populacija. But it just goes to show you how confused and deceived so many people are. Ampak uh, nam pokaže, kak uh, zmedeni in prevarani so ljudje. So we see so many passages that we won't take the time to read them all. They are in the slides for those that are watching. First Peter chapter 3, Peter is talking about this, um, the, these uh, spirits that are imprisoned. Um, prva, druga Petrova, uh, prva Petrova 3 pravi o teh duhovih, ki so vječi. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, it says that God will throw them into hell, the gloomy pit of darkness, where they were being held until the day of judgment. V drugi Petrovi 2, 4 do 5, pravi, da uh, so... God will throw the angels angele strmoglavi v podzemlje in jih uklenil v verige do končne sodbe. In Jude, Jude speaks about this. So we see this throughout the, the New Testament, Old and New Testament. Juda tudi govori o tem. Vidimo to v Novi Zavezi in v Stari Zavezi. There's a coming a day of final judgment. Da prihaja dan končne sodbe. And this is clearly described by John in the book of Revelation chapter 20. In uh, jasno to opisuje tudi apostol Janez v razodetju 20. In chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, this is what's referred to as the great white throne judgment or simply judgment day. Od 11. do 15. vrstice se je odlomak imenuje sodba z velikega belega prestola ali enostavno končna sodba. And when I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, and I saw the dead, both small and great, standing before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, what they did in this life, by the things which was written in the book. So detailed documentation is being recorded on our lives, both for the saints and for the sinners. Zatem sem videl velik bel prestol in njega, ki je sedel v njem, na njem. Na to sem videl umrle velike in male, kako stojijo pred prestolom in odprle so se knjige, in umrli so bili sojeni po tem, kar je bilo napisano v knjigah. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered. This is now the interim hell, having to give up all these, those imprisoned since the angelic rebellion to the day of the Lord. In morje je vrnilo mrtve, ki so bili v njem, in tudi smrt in podzemlje sta vrnila mrtve, ki sta jih hranila. To je bil ta začasni peko. And we see that death and hell was then cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In na to sta bila smrt in podzemlje vržena v ognjeno jezero. In to je druga smrt in če kdo ni bil zapisan v knjigi življenja, je bil vržen v ognjeno jezero. And on the slide that you can see, for those watching, I give just several verses talking about this lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, 14. 15, Revelation 21, 8, speak about this lake of fire, the second death. In o tem uh, ognjenem jezeru drugi smrti govori razodetje 20 v 10. vrstici, v 14, v 15 in 21, 8. So, at the coming of the Lord, interim heaven will empty. 
Tako da pri gospodovem prihodu bodo ta začasna nebesa izpraznena, saj za nekaj časa, tako da se bo zgodilo ustajenje mrtvih in živih. At the end of the judgment, we will see, of judgment day, we will see that interim hell is no longer needed and it will be thrown to the lake of fire. It will be discontinued. Na končni sodbi potem tudi pekl ne bo več potreben in bo vržen v ognjeno jezero. Now, this is an interesting subject as to whether this lake of fire and this eternal destruction and this eternal death, whether it is a conscious eternal, conscious eternal suffering forever and ever and ever, or does this prophetically mean that it's an absolute and complete and total destruction where there is no more consciousness at all? In to je zanimiva tema, če ta pač druga smrt pomeni trpljenje vso večnost ali pomeni konec obstoja in zavedanja. And there's some good arguments on both sides of that subject. In obstajajo dobri argumenti na obeh stranih te vse tega razlaganja. Especially the way we in our western minds and our understanding how we understand the words forever and eternal and forever and ever is very different than the way the Hebrews understood these words and concepts and how they used them. Posebno ker način kako zahodnjaki razumejo večnost in na veke in veke je drugačen kot kar hebrejci recimo razumejo. So for example in Jude, Jude says that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by eternal fire. Recimo, Juda pravi, da sta bila Sodoma in Gomora uničena z večnim ognjem. So, obviously, we can't go to the Middle East and still see Sodom and Gomora burning today. Ampak očitno ne moramo iti na bližnji vzhod ali srednji vzhod in videti, da Sodoma in Gomora še vedno gorita. So, we'll leave that open. That's something that we need to open the conversation. I think that's an important subject for us to talk about. To bomo pustili odprto. Mislim, da je pomemben pogovor So we're going to take a little break right now because he thinks I'm too sweaty. And and then we'll move into the third category, which I think will be interesting, something you may never have heard before. In potem se bomo dotaknil še trete kategorije, ki je zanimiva in mislim, da o tem še niste velik slišali. Probably one of the most common questions that's asked by people uh, around the world, those that have heard the gospel. What happens to those who have never heard the gospel? Uh, and that's a... So the third member on the bus is representative of the individual who has never been given a choice. Ta tretji potnik na avtobusu v drami predstavlja 
človeka, ki nikoli ni imel možnosti, da se odloči. The first two are easier to understand. I think we can understand someone who accepts Christ or rejects Christ. Prvi je bil nekdo, ki ga lahko razumemo, ali je zavrnil Kristusa ali je sprejel Kristusa. But what about the billions and billions of people who have never heard Christ? I never heard the gospel. Miliarde in miliarde ljudi, ki nikoli niso slišali evangelija. What happens to them? Kaj se zgodi z njimi? We understand the concept and the penalty and the cost of rejecting Christ and and perishing, but that's a choice that someone was given and they made that choice. What about those that have never heard? Mi razumemo da posledica tega da nekdo zavrne Kristusa je poguba, ampak kaj pa če nekdo ni imel možnosti da se odloči? If the day of the Lord was to be Today, right now, this minute, and the Lord was to come back. Če bi bil danes gospod odaljen, bi on se danes vrnil. What would happen to the literally billions and billions, five, six billion people who would say, Jesus who? Never heard of him. Kaj bi se zgodil s temi petimi, šestimi milijardami ljudmi, ki bi rekel, kdo je že Jezus? And I would answer that question as I've been asked that for over 40 years by saying the Holy Spirit is working with everyone individually and He knows in who are His. Pač teh 40 let ljudje vprašali, kaj se zgodi s temi, ki niso imeli možnosti odločitve, bi rekel, ja, pač Sveti Duh dela z vsakim individualno in on ve. God will judge every person according to their own conscience. Bog bo sodu vsakega človeka po njegovi vesti. And in every culture, people run to whatever light, whatever truth they know, and they run away from whatever they do not want to, the light they do not want to walk in. Pač v vsake kulturi so ljudje, ki hočejo resnico ali pa bežijo stran od resnice. And the Lord will work that all out in judgment. In Gospod bo vse to pravilno odločil v končni sodbi. Let me introduce to you another possibility. Ne vam predstavim še eno možnost. That this is not something that I would normally ever speak. I have never spoken about this until just recently I called some pastors together to share this with them. In o tem nisem še veliko govoril. Pred kratkim sem skupini pastorjev razložil. Not to try to... Introduce or to push some sort of a doctrine, but rather to open the conversation. Ne znamenom da bi neko novo doktrino reklamiral, ampak da odprem možnost za pogovor. I want us to look at some very important scriptures, and we need to have a dialogue. We need to discuss these things. Želim da pogledamo ene pomembne citate Svetega pisma, o katerih se je vredno pogovarja. Because I do believe that what I'm going to present to you now, it pulls together, it ties all, it puts all of the pieces of the puzzle and locks them into place. Ker verjamem, da to, o čemer vam bom zdaj govoril, vse koščke sestavljanke poveže v skupno sliko. Anyone that takes a position today on eschatology in the end of the age has some scriptures to try to support their view. Vsak, ki ima neko stališče glede poslednjih časov in sodbe, ima določene citate, s katerimi potoriuje svoje stališče. The challenge is, is that though some scriptures fit, a multitude of other scriptures do not fit. Izziv je pa to, da mnogi citati pašajo v to razlago, mnogi drugi pa ne. And like any puzzle, we don't have an accurate picture until all of the pieces of the puzzle have been put, snapped into place. In tako, kot kar pa resnični sestavljan, ki nimamo cele slike, dokler vsak koščak ne pride na svoje mesto. So, let's go now on to number three, and this is now the unbelievers, or the Bible may call them the wicked, number of, but these are people who were never given a choice. And this is now everyone from the first Adam all the way to the second resurrection. In to je zdaj skupina ljudi, ki so neverni, ampak še niso imeli možnosti odločitve, In to vse od prvega Adama do drugega ustajenja. When I say the second resurrection, that means there must be a first resurrection. Ko omenam drugo ustajenje, to pomeni, da mora biti tudi prva ustajenja. Now Jesus taught extensively on this, as we see throughout the New Testament, that there's actually two different resurrections. In Jezus je veliko učil o tem, da sta dejansko dve različni ustajenji. In John chapter 5, verse 28, Jesus says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, in which all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. 
Janez 5, 28 do 29 pravi, ne čudite se temu, ker pride ura, ki bodo vsi, ki so v grobovih slišali glas Božjega Sina in te, ki bojo ga slišali, bojo prišli v ustajenje, v večno življenje. Te, ki pa ne, pa v pogubo. In Luke 14, Jesus talks about the recompense or the reward of the resurrection of the of the just, of the righteous. Luka 14, 14 pravi o plačilu za pravične. In Acts chapter 24, and we have this hope towards God that they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. In apostolska dela 24, 15 pravi, da imamo to upanje, da bo ustajenje od mrtvih tako za pravične kot za nepravične. So this is something that the Jews were anticipating, this resurrection that would come one day, a resurrection for the righteous, for those that believe, and then the resurrection of those that do not believe. To je nekaj, kar so židje pričakovali, ustajenje pravičnih in teh, ki verujejo in teh, ki ne verujejo. And we don't really see clearly if when and how these resurrections relate to each other until the very, very last chapter of the last chapters of the Bible. In ne vidimo čist jasne slike tega do zadnjih nekaj poglavi razudetja. And here John sees this revelation and sees the sequencing, the timing of these two resurrections and he sees it clearly. In tukaj apostol Janez vidi zaporedje in časovno razporeditev obeh teh ustajen. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 8. Gremo v razodetje 20 od 4 do 8. And I saw thrones, and then that sat on the thrones, and judgment was committed to them, that they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is where we get the word millennium, the millennial reign, for literally means a thousand years. This is the only place in the entire New Testament where this is mentioned. Okay? So this is now this millennial or thousand year reign. Na to sem videl prestole, tistim, ki so sedli na nje, je bila dana oblast, da so sodili in eni so oživeli in kraljevali s Kristusom tisoč let. So who are going to obviously be living with Christ? Who are the ones resurrected that will live with Christ? Kdo so te, ki so obojeni od mrtvih in bojo oživeli s Kristusom? Obviously the believers. Očitno verniki. Right? Je tako. No question in anyone's mind. Ni dvoma glede tega. Okay. Then we see, but the rest, everyone else, did not live again until the thousand years was finished. For this is the first resurrection, and if there's a first resurrection, there must be a second resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who hath part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death and judgment will have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with them a thousand years. Drugi mrtvi pa niso oživeli, dokler se ni dopolnilo tisoč let. To je prvo ustajenje in če je prvo ustajenje, mora biti to drugo ustajenje. Blažen in svet, kdor ima delež pri prvem ustajenju, nad takim druga smrt nima nobene oblasti, ampak bodo postali Boži in Kristusovi duhovniki, ter bojo kraljevali z njim tisoč let. So we see two resurrections, right? Torej vidimo, da sta dve ustajeni. There's a resurrection of the righteous and a resurrection of the unrighteous. Ustajenje pravičnih in ustajenje nepravičnih. There's a first resurrection and there's a second resurrection. Je prvo ustajenje in je drugo ustajenje. And a thousand years separate the two. In tisoč let loči te dve ustajenje. Now some will argue and theologians have argued, is that a literal thousand years or is it a figurative thousand years? In eni bi se kregal glede tega in nogi so se, ali gre za to do besednih tisoč let, ali je pravičnih neka prispodoba, simbol. But here is where we get this idea of a millennial reign. Ampak v tem besedilu dobimo idejo o tisočletnem kraljevanju. Now, where will the saints be ruling and reigning with Christ? Kje je točno bojo svetniki tisoč let vlada s Kristusom? Whether it's literal or some other period of time. Ali je to do besedno tisočletje ali kakšno drugo obdobje? Most people teach today that they will rule and reign with Christ on the earth. Večina ljudi pravi, da bojo vladali s Kristusom na zemlji. Well, I don't think that's possible. Mislim, da je to možno. Because too many scriptures do not fit into place. They do not snap into place. Ker, ampak, da ni mogoče, ker veliko citatov ne paše na svoje mesto. 
then I believe that the saints will be ruling and reigning with Christ in this period in heaven, in the interim heaven. Verjamem, da bodo svetniki vladali s Kristusom v teh prehodnih nebesih. Jesus says to his disciples in his last teachings, he says, it's good that I go because I am going to go and prepare a place for you so that when I come for you, I will take you and you will be with me. Jezus je rekel v zadnji besedi, zadnjem sporočilu pred smrtjo, da dober je za vas, da grem, ker vam bom pripravil prostor, kamer boste tudi vi prišli, ki vas pridem iskati in boste vi zmano. When John saw the new Jerusalem ordained, or anointed, filled with the saints of God, they came down from heaven to the earth. Ko je Janez videl novi Jeruzalem, poln svetnikov, ki se je spuščil dol na zemljo, je prihajal iz nebes. Where were the saints? Were they on earth or were they in heaven? Kje so bili svetija? So bili na zemlji ali v nebesi? The bride of Christ comes down from heaven. Kristusova nemesta pride dol iz nebes. They're not on the earth. Niso na zemlji. Now they're going to be on the earth. Bodo na konc na zemlji. On the new earth, they will rule and reign as kings and priests forever. Kjer bodo vladali kot Boži duhovniki in kralji na veke. Some people teach that that this is these are people on the earth that survived the coming of the Lord and the day of the Lord. Eni učijo, da te ljudje, ki so na zemlji, so te, ki so preživeli gospodov dan. Let me read here this passage here. Now, when the thousand years is expired, Satan will be loosed, released from his prison, and he will go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather together to battle whose number is like the sand of the sea. Beremo zdaj naprej razodetje 20 od 7. vrstice naprej, ko pa se dopolni tisoč let, bo Satan izpuščen iz svoje ječe, stopi bo na plano, da bi zapeljal narode, ki so na štirih koncih zemlje, Goga in Magoga, ter jih zbral na vojsko. Njih število bo, kakor je peska na morju. Here is a question that has caused scholars throughout 2000 years to scratch their head to say, who in the world are these nations? In glede tega so se teologi praskal stoletja, kdo so te narodi? Because in chapters before this, in chapters 17, 18 and 19, we see three chapters as God brings the day of the Lord and the judgment on the earth and destroys the earth with fire. Ker v razodeti 18, 19 vidimo, da Bog prinese sodbo nad zemljo in jo uniči z ognem. In 2 Peter, in fact, if we do a study of the day of the Lord, we see it's a day of absolute and complete judgment and destruction. Če pogledamo, če preštudiramo ta gospoda v dan v Svetem pismu, vidimo, da je to dan apsolutnega uničanja. We read a little bit earlier, Peter. Peter says, the day of the Lord, and when the day of the Lord comes, it will be, it will be, the Lord will destroy the earth with fire, and the elements will melt. Pravi, da ko bo gospodov dan prišel, bo uničil zemljo z ognem in elementi se bojo topili v vročini. When God had to judge the entire earth in the day of Noah, he destroyed it with water. How many people survived? How many of the unrighteous survived? Ko je Bog moral sodati zemljo v Noetovem času, koliko nepravičnih je preživelo? Not one. Only eight people survived. That was Noah and his family ko niti eden, samo osem ljudi je preživelo in to je bila Noje in njegova družina. And Jesus said, like in the days before Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. But he will not come to destroy and judge the world with water, he will destroy it with fire. In Jezus je rekel, da tako, kot kar je bilo Noje to vih dneh, tako bojo dnevi sina človekovega, ampak, ki pride spet na zemljo, ampak ne bo uničil zemlje z vodo, ampak z ognjem. So when we read 2 Peter chapter 3 in the account of Peter, we see that the earth is completely destroyed by fire. There's nothing left. No one lies. No unbeliever lives. In ko beremo drugo Petrovo tretje poglavje, vidimo, da je to radikalno uničenje z ognjem, da noben ne more preživeti. So many people teach that these people that survived the day of the Lord in the coming of Christ, at the end of the tribulation, those survivors, go on then to grow in the nations over the next thousand years. Eni učijo, da te, ki bojo na zemlji narodi, da bojo pač preživeli tega gospodovega dneva, ki se bojo potem razmnožili. But that doesn't fit. The scriptures don't fit together. Ampak citati enostavno ne pašajo skupi na ta način. There must be another explanation. Mora biti neka druga razlaga. So let me respectfully submit another 
possibility. Tako da nej vam spoštljivo predlagam drugo možnost. That these nations are actually a result of the second resurrection. Da ti narodi na zemlji so dejansko rezultat drugega ustajenja. In the day of the Lord. In na gospodov dan. In what many call the rapture. To, kar mnogi imenujejo v njebo vzetje. The living and those that have died in Christ will meet the Lord together in the clouds. Živi verniki in tisti, ki so umrli v Kristusu, se bojo srečali z njim na oblaki. The wicked will be destroyed. Hudobni bodo uničeni. In fact, the descriptions of Revelation are pretty graphic. The kings are going to be crying out, let the mountains fall on us. Shield us from the face of this coming Christ, of this judge. V razodetju je to precej grafično opisano, da bojo vladari upil nej gore padejo na nas in nas zaščitijo pred Jezo, Boga in Kristusa. I believe that a thousand years after that event, verjamam, da tisoč let po temu dogodku, Jesus will, there will be a second resurrection. Bo drugo ustajenje. This is the resurrection of all those who have never had a choice. Never been given a choice. To bo ustajenje teh, ki nikoli niso imeli možnosti odločitve. They've never heard the gospel. Nikoli niso slišali evangelija. And therefore they've never rejected the gospel. In zato niso nikoli zavrnili evangelija. And I believe this is a vast number of people like like it says here in Revelation like the like the saints like the grains of sand on the beach. I mean In verjam da to res ogromno število ljudi tako kot kar tu ki piše kako je peska ob morju. And so some of ask well you saying that these people will be given a second chance? A to pomeni da pravaš da bo tem ljudem dana druga možnost? No, absolutely not. Ne, I'm saying they'll be given the first chance. Pravim da im boda na prva možnost. Because unlike you and I who have heard the gospel and have chosen or not chosen, uh, they've never heard the gospel. Za razliko od najo, ko smo sva slišala evangelije in sva ga lahko zavrnila ali sprejela, oni nakol niso slišali. Now this suddenly connects dozens and dozens and dozens of scriptures in the Old Testament. In to ne nadoma poveže skupaj na desetine odlomkov iz stare zaveze. Suddenly Psalm 2, Psalm 110, all of these psalms start making sense. Psalm 2, Psalm 110, nenadoma začnejo imeti smisel. Who talk about the, the, the king from the seed of David who will rule and reign on the earth with a rod of iron. Ki govori o kralju iz Davidovega rodu, ki bo z železno palico vladal na zemlji. The kings of the earth will come, they must come to Jerusalem to give him honor. Kralji narodov bodo morali pridati v Jeruzalem, da mu izkažejo čas. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess he is the Lord. Vsak koleno bo pokleknilo in vsak jezik bo priznal. I don't think that's talking to believers. I don't need to do that. I've surrendered to him. Mislim, da ne govori to o vernikih, ker mi smo to naredili. So we see very clearly in all of these passages of Scripture that we have goat nations and sheep nations on the earth. There's a mixture of those that believe and those that really don't believe ker tudi ta citat o kozlovskih narodih in te, ki so ovce, različni mešance so teh, ki verujejo in teh, ki ne verujejo. So that's why you could see how this made sense when the Jews of the first century, when they were waiting for their Messiah, how this Messiah, this king is going to come and he's going to crush the Romans and establish his rule and reign as the king of the earth. In to ima potem smisel tudi glede na to, kaj so židje pričakvali, da ko bo Mesija prišel, da bo zdrobil to nadvlado njihovih sovražnikov in zavladal. When will all these scriptures be fulfilled? At what point, what period of time can they possibly be fulfilled? Kje v času bi vsi te citati lahko bili izpolnjeni? There is a period of time. Tukaj je ta del časa. Because as we read here, it says that Satan will be bound for a thousand years and then he will be released after the second resurrection of the wicked. He will be loosed once again to deceive the earth. Piše, da bo Satan zvezan za tisoč let, potem po drugem ustajenju pa bo spet sproščen na zemlo. Now it just says for a period, for a period of time. We don't know how long that is. Piše, da za določen čas Ne vemo, koliko časa je to. We don't know if it's hundreds of years or a thousand years. The Bible doesn't say. It just says for a short time. Ne vemo, ali je stotine let, ali je tisoče let pravi za umejen čas. It's clearly long enough for the Lord to rule and reign on the earth, for the knowledge of the Lord to cover the oceans, to cover the earth like the oceans. Ampak očitno bo za dosti dolgo časa gospod vladal na zemlji nad vsemi narodi, da bo 
spoznanje Božje slave napunilo zemlo kot kar ocean. Yeah. And everyone who's ever lived from the first Adam until this rule and reign of Christ on the earth will be given a choice to accept or reject. In čisto vsak, ki je živel od prvega Adama do konca uh, končne sodbe, bo imel možnost uh, sprejeti ali zavrniti. And in the end, we know that the Bible says that Satan will rise up a great number of people, the nations. He will rise them up and they will literally march and attack the New Jerusalem with Jesus in, on the throne, physically, not in heaven, on earth. And they're going to rebel against him. In piše, da bo Satan uh, zapelil narode, da bojo marširal proti uh, novemu Jeruzalemu, kjer bo Jezus vladal fizično tukaj na zemlji. Could you imagine a rebellion like that? Si lahko predstavljate tak upor? Could you see that the consequences of such a rebellion would be absolute final judgment? Si lahko predstavljate, da posledice takega upora bodo apsolutna končna sodba? We're not talking about people who, you know, I heard about this Jesus, I don't know, I, show me him, I don't know who he is, I, you know, I've never seen him, I don't know. These are people who see him, who know him. He's physical, he's on the earth. Ne gre za ljudi, ki ne bi vel za Jezusa, ga ne bi videl, uh, to je, tukaj je Kristus prisoten fizično, vsi ga lahko vidijo. In to rebel against a physical Christ on a physical throne in a physical New Jerusalem, that's pretty serious stuff. In da se upreš Kristusu, ki je viden fizičen na fizičnem prestolu na zemlji, to je zelo resna stvar. Okay. And then we see the very next thing is the nations march upon, they are destroyed in the final battle, which is the battle of Gog and Magog. Not the battle of Armageddon, the battle of Gog and Magog. In vidimo, da potem uh, ta končna bitka, v kateri so uporniki uničeni, ni bitka uh, Armageddona, ampak bitka Goga in Magoga. And then the, the, and then the end. In potem je konec. Here, then is the judgment day, the great white throne judgment. Mm-hmm. Potem je uh, končni dan sodbe pred velikim prestolom. Hell will, will, will give up all of its dead. Uh, Pekel bo spustil vse svoje mrtve. And all those that rebelled in this final battle of Gog and Magog will be brought before final judgments and in, the books will be opened. In vsi te, ki so umrli v tej uh, so, uh, bo, bitki Goga in Magoga bojo prepelani na končno sodbo. That makes sense to me. Meni to zveni smiselno. It's a little hard for me to understand how somebody who's never heard of Christ težko mi je pač razumeti da nekdo ki nikoli ni slišal za Kristusa would be brought before final judgment bi bil prepeljan pred končno sodbo after 70 years po 70 letih and then put into a lake of fire to burn forever and ever and ever and ever in se potem uh, uh, žgal v ognjenem jezeru vse vek na veke that's i I've been dealing with it for 40 years. I, I'm uncomfortable with that idea. In 40 let sem se uh, matral s to idejo in mi je bila neugodna. But my feelings don't matter. God's word is what matters. Ampak niso moje občutki tisti, ki so pomembni. Božja beseda je pomembna. But as I read these passages and these scriptures in this light, suddenly it makes much more sense to me. Ampak ko berem odlomke Svetega pisma, v tej luči mi nenadoma velik bolj smiselno vse zmeni. Is it possible that the Lord will give everybody that's never been given a chance a chance? They will they will be resurrected and they will live on the new earth with Christ seated on the throne in Jerusalem. Just like the Jews always envisioned. This was their Old Testament picture. This is what's going to happen. Ali je možno da da bo pač Kristus vladal na fizični zemlji uh, in bo je vsi mojel možnosti uh, odločitev proti njemu ali za njega? Koliko, kar so židje pričakovali. Psalm 72, and all the kings will fall, fall down before him, and all the nations shall serve him. Psalm 72, vsi narodi bodo padali pred njim in vsi, vsa ljudstva mu bodo služila. Now, you ready for this next key that I believe is going to unlock the end of the age? Ste pripravljeni še za en ključ, ki bo odklenil te posledne čase, konec. I want to reveal to you what I believe is a mystery unlocked. Verjamam, da je to skrivnost odklenjena. A key that will unlock the mystery that has kept the end of the book of Revelation a mystery for thousands of years. Ključ, ki je držal zaklenjen uh, knjigo razodetja 
Posebno za nas, ki izhajamo iz zahodnega sveta in razmišljamo zelo drugače, kot kar hebrejci. You see, when we read something and we read the Bible, for example, we read it like we do most books. We read it chronologically. Ko beremo sveto pismo, jo beremo kot kar večino knjig kronološko. And the book of Revelation in much of the Bible is not written chronologically. Ampak knjiga razodetja in velik del svetega pisma ni zapisan kronološko. There are a series of visions that Paul saw and then he wrote what he saw. Gre za serijo vizi, ki so jo Boži služavnik ki videl in zapisal. And many times the writer will go, actually he'll be talking about something and he'll go back in time and he'll explain and expound upon something he saw, but actually it happened before. In dosti krat piše o nečem, kar se dogaja in potem skoči nazaj v preteklost in pojasni nekaj, kar se je tam zgodilo. In fakt, we're used to it even in today's modern movies that we see today. V bistvu smo navajeni tega in tudi z modernih filmov. You're watching the movies telling a story. Gledaš film, govori o zgodbi. And then finally the main actor suddenly goes back into time. Potem gre pa glavni igralec nenadoma nazaj v času. And maybe the color picture turns black and white, so you know what's happening. In barna slika se spremeni v črno-belo, zato da veš, da se je to zgodil. And he is remembering and seeing something that took place in the past. In on se spominja in vidi to, kar se je dogajalo v preteklosti. And I believe we see that in many of the apocalyptic books of the Bible. In verjamem, da vidimo to na več apokaliptičnih odlomkih v Svetem pismu. In fact, in the book of Revelation, we see as we go through the seven seals, we come to the sixth seal and suddenly we have an apprentices. An entire chapter is inserted in the book of Revelation. Recimo, chapter 7. Mamo, uh, mamo uh, šest pečatev in enadoma je en cel poglav je ustavljen, preden pride do sedmega uh, pečata. Yeah. So we have an entire chapter of John explaining what he sees and then we go on to the, to the seventh and the final seal. Celo poglav je Janez uh, opisuje, kaj vidi in potem gre na končni sedmi pečat. Same thing happens when we come to the sixth trumpet. Isto se zgodi, ko pridemo do šeste trobente. We have apprentices, what is chapter 10, entire chapter of what John sees between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Je eno celo poglavje, kaj je apostol Janez vidi med šesto in sedmo trobento. And this is exactly what happens at the end chapters 21 and 22. In točno na ta način se zgodi tudi med poglavjema 21 in 22. When he sees the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, that doesn't happen after final judgment. That is a look back in time, probably around the second resurrection, when the New Jerusalem comes down and the, and the second resurrection occurs. Ko vidi novi Jeruzalem prihaja dol na zemlo, to ne pomeni, da se to dogaja po končni sodbi, ampak verjetno tam nekje v mes prihaja po prvem ustajenju. If we read, like I did for most of my adult life, and I think that chapter 21 and chapter 22 are the last two chapters chronologically, I will completely not understand the book of Revelation. Če beremo tako, kot kar sem jaz, večino časa brav razodete 21 in 22 samo kronološko, ne moramo razumeti. Very much how the first two chapters of the Bible are written is very similar to the last few chapters. Podobno, kot kar sta prva dva poglavja Svetega pisma zapisana, sta tudi zadnja dva poglavja. Genesis chapter 1, God gives an overview of the creation days. V prvem Mojzesovi knjigi ena, Bog pove celoten pregled stvarjenja. Chapter 2, it focuses primarily on day 6, the creation of man. Drugo poglavje pa se fokusira v glavnem na šesti dan stvarjenja človeka. Chapter 20, the book of Revelation, lays out the timeline from the first, second resurrection to the final judgment. That's the timeline of what's going to happen. 20. poglavje razodetja predstavi celo sliko časovnico, kaj se zgodi od prvega ustajenja do končne sodbe. And then he gives a vision of what he saw back in time when the New Jerusalem came down to the earth. In potem pove vizijo nazaj v času, kaj se zgodi, ko Novi Jeruzalem pride na zemlo. Let me give you some examples of why I believe that. Bom dal nekaj primerov, zakaj tako verujamo. When he sees the new Jerusalem come down from heaven, ko vidi novi Jeruzalem pride dol z nebes, it comes down as a walled city. 
pride dol kot za zidovi utrjeno mesto. Now obviously back then they understood what that means. We know what that means to this day. Um, takrat so sigurno razumel kaj to pomeni. Še danes lahko razumemo. Why do, you, why do you need a wall around a city? Zakaj rabiš ob zidi okoli mesta? There's no more sin. There's no more death. There's no more devil. Ni več smrti, ni več. There's no more rebellion. No more wicked. Ni več ništa, no benih hudobnih. Why do you need a wall? Zakaj rabiš zid? Could it be that there's still a battle yet coming? Ali je možno da še še prihaja ena bitka? Yeah, there's a battle coming. Ja, še ena bitka. The final battle of Gog and Magog. Končna bitka Goga in Magoga. The new Jerusalem need to be walled. In Novi Jerusalem mora bit utrjen z obzidjem. I can't tell you how many times I read chapter 21 and 22 and my eyes were blinded from some of the most obvious clues. Ne vem kok časa sem kokrat sem bral poglavje 21 in 22 in moje oči so bile zaprte za najbolj očitne stvari. God sees the new, uh, John sees the new Jerusalem come down and he says that and that God then puts an angel in each one of the 12 gates. Uh, Bog pravi Novi Jeruzalem pride na zemljo in potem postavi angela za stražo vsaki, vsakmu od 12 vrat. Why does he do that? Zakaj je to potrebno? Chapters 21 and 22 tell us. Poglavje 21 in 22 nam povesta. Because only those whose names are written in the book of life are allowed to enter the new Jerusalem. Ker samo tisti, ka, katerih ime je zapisano v Jezusovi knjigi življenja, jim je dovoljeno pridati v Novi Jeruzalem. Okay. What does that mean? That means there's a lot of people whose names are not written in the book of life. To pomeni da je velik ljudi na zemlji, ka njihova imena niso v knjigi življenja. And they're not allowed to enter the new Jerusalem. In ni dovoljeno vstopat. And God puts an angel at each gate to prevent anyone who doesn't have their proper documentation to enter the city. In Bog da svojega angela vsakim vratom zato da prepreči vstop vsem, ki nimajo pravilne dokumentacije s sabo. John sees the the river of life coming out of the throne in the in the tree of life that bears the leaves for the healing of the nations. Ja, Janes vidi uh, reko Boga, ki prihaja od prestola in drevesa ob njej, katerih listi so za ozdravljenje narodov. What nations? Katerih narodov? And what nations need healing? In kateri narodi potrebujejo ozdravljenje? Where they come from? Od kje so prišli? Two possibilities. Dve možnosti. These are survivors of the battle of Armageddon and the first coming of Christ and ali, the judgment of the earth by fire. Ali so to preživeli z prve bitke, uh, bitke Armagedona, uh, ki so preživeli sodbo z ognjem. But that doesn't work. Too many scriptures do not allow that to be connected to work. Ampak to ne deluje. Velik citatov ne, ne potarjuje, da, da bi to lahko šlo skupi. But if these nations are the result of the second resurrection, Če so pa ti narodi uh, rezultat drugega ustajenja. The resurrection of the unbelievers, those who have never accepted Christ, those who have never been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Ustajenja nevernikov, te, ki nakolj niso mogli sprejeti Kristusa in biti oprani z njegovo krvjo. Those who not, have not yet been given the opportunity to be put in the Lamb's book of life. Ti, ki uh, jim ni bila dana možnost, da bi bili zapisani v Jagnetovo knjigo življenja. And then finally, the most obvious fact in končno na, najbolj očitno dejstvo. As we go back to chapter 20, we see that the new Jerusalem, the holy city is on the earth. It has to be on the earth for the battle of Gog and Magog. Uh, vidimo da ta uh, Božje mesto, Novi Jeruzalem je na zemlji in mora biti na zemlji zato da se ta bitka Goga in Magoga lahko zgodi. That makes sense. Je to smiselno. Suddenly now all of these scriptures and all of these hundreds of scriptures in the Old Testament, all of them like a piece of a puzzle, all start to come together. Nenadoma vse te stotine citatov iz stare zaveze uh, lahko celo sliko sestavljan kot dopolnijo. So here I'm providing you a timeline which is maybe one of the most valuable timelines uh, that I can present to you. Tako da tukaj bi vam uh, rad predstavil časovnico, ki je ena najbolj dragocenih, ki vam jo lahko And I just try to take all of these apocalyptic scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, teachings of Jesus, teachings of Paul, Book of Revelation, I simply lay them out on a timeline as we would understand a timeline. Vse te uh, odlomke o poslednjih časih sem dal na eno časovnico, ki predstavlja celo sliko. So from the days of Jesus and the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, in which so many passages of scripture were fulfilled, od uh, Jezusovih uh, dni uh, do leta 70 po Kristusu, ko je bilo mnogo odlomkov 
Svetega pisma izpolnjenih. All of mankind has been waiting for the day of the Lord who will come like a thief in the night. Je vse človeštvo pričakovalo gospodov dan, ki bo prišel kot tat po noči. And when we talk about this coming of the Lord, we see we see these two these scriptures that appear to be contradictory. In uh, ko govorimo o gospodovem dnevu, vidimo vse te citate, ki na vidas si nas pratujejo. One is is set of scriptures talk about him coming like a thief in the night when you least expect it. Uh, kako lahko on pride kot tat po noči, to pomeni takrat, ko ga najmanj pričakuješ. Jesus said like the days before Noah. Jesus je rekel, ko kar uh, v dneh uh, were, Noeta. They were eating and drinking and they did not know what was fixing to happen. So, jedali in pili, niso vedeli, kaj, kaj se bo zgodil. Until it started to rain. Dok ne ni začelo deževati. And then it was the big oh oh. In potem je bil velik oh oh. Paul talks to the Corinthians and talking about the day of the Lord. He says, he says when everyone is saying peace and safety, that's when you need to be careful. Pavel pravi v Korinčanom, ko vsi govorijo mir in varnost, takrat morate biti pazljivi. And then you have these other scriptures that talk about the nations attacking and raging against God and marching on, the, on Jerusalem. In potem so citati, ko narodi napadajo Boga in marširajo proti Jeruzalemu. An epic battle on the earth. Uh, epska bitka na zemlji. How can both be true? Kako je lahko oboje možno? I think the answer is simple. Mislim, da je odgovor enostavan. These scriptures are not talking about one event, they're talking about two different events. Te citati ne govorijo o enemu dogodku, ampak o dveh različnih. No different than the, than the, the Jews at the time of Jesus. Nič drugače, kot kar židje v Jezusom časom. All of these scriptures talking about their Messiah ruling and reigning on the earth. Meni so vse te, te citate, ki govorijo o Mesiji, ki bo vladal na zemlji. And then these other passages talk about a suffering Messiah who, who, would, who would be crucified as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. How can both of these be true? Zdravam pa drugi citati, ki so govorilo o križanemu Mesiji, ki bo vzel nase grehe vsega sveta. Kako je lahko oboje resnično? Not, which many did not, could not understand is that the, these scriptures were not talking about one event, they were talking about two events, two different events. In to, kar mnogi niso mogli razumeti, takrat, da ti odlomki niso govorili o enem, Času, o dveh so I believe that we are talking about in, in terms of ep- apocalyptic end time, end of the age scriptures and prophecies. Tako da ko govorimo o odlomki svetega pisma o poslednjih časih, these are actually two categories, two groups of scriptures that talk about two different events. Gre za dve skupine odlomkov, ki govorijo o dveh različnih dogodkih. Many of these are talking about what will occur at the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, the battle of Armageddon. Mnogo se jih bo izpolnil na uh, gospodov dan, uh, k- ki bo ta uh, bitka pri Armagedonu. And the rest will be fulfilled at the battle of, Ga- of Gog and Magog. In drugi bojo izpolneni pri bitki Goga in Magoga. Prior to final judgment. Tik pred končno sodbo. So here's the timeline. Tukaj je časovnica. We are now waiting for the coming of the Lord. Zdaj pričakujemo prihod gospoda. Like a thief in the night. Ki pride kot tat po noči. Like the days before Noah. Kot uh, v dneh pred Noetom. When everyone's calling peace and safety. Ko vsi kličejo mir in varnost. And it won't be obvious. It'll be it'll happen like when you don't expect it. In uh, ne bo očitno, ne bo se zgodil Takrat, and then suddenly the Lord will come as the lightning flashes from the east and goes to the west. So will, come, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Nenadoma bo Gospod prišel, kakor blisk, ki se zasveti od shoda do zahoda, bo njegov prihod. And he will judge and destroy the earth, not with water, but with fire. In bo sodu zemljo, ne z vodo, ampak z ognjem. For a thousand years the saints will rule and reign with Christ. Tisoč let bojo sveti vladali s Kristusom. After the first resurrection. Po prvem ustajenju. And then there'll be the second resurrection. In potem bo drugo ustajenje. The new Jerusalem will descend to the new earth as a bride. Drugi Jeruzalem se bo spustil na zemljo, kot kar Kristusova nevesta. The wicked, the unfaithful, the unbelieving, those that have never been washed by the blood of the lamb will be resurrected. Verni, uh, neverni, te, ki niso nakol slišali evangelija, bojo obojeni od mrtvih. Christ will rule and reign on the earth physically. Kristus bo vladal na zemlji fizično. He will teach the knowledge of the Lord will fill the earth. In bo učil in uh, spoznanje Boga bo napolnilo zemljo. No more wickedness. 
Nobene uh, hudobije. No politics. Nobene politike več. Because he will rule with a rod of iron. Ker bo vladal z železno rok uh, palico. Ne? He doesn't he's not going to take any nonsense from anybody. On ne bo poslušal uh, nesmisla ne? od All these dictators we've seen, you know, the Hitlers, the Stalins, the Maos and all of the rest. He's not worried about any dictator rising up. Si te diktatori, o katerih smo slišal, uh, Jezus ne bo skrbel gledenje. The nations will worship him. Vsi narodi ga bojo čustili. And acknowledge him. In ga priznava. And serve him. In mu služil. But in the end, ampak na koncu, Satan's final and last attempt, he will rise up the final rebellion against the Christ. Bo Satan v zadnem poskusu dvignu upor proti Kristusu. You know, it's very similar to what we've seen in history. As they say, history repeats itself, ne? To je zelo podobno, kot kar smo videli v zgodovini in tudi pravijo, da se zgodovina ponavlja. Napoleon became a dictator in Europe just uh, two centuries ago. Napoleon je postal diktator v Evropi samo dva stoletja nazaj. He was defeated. In je bil poražen. And he was exiled to an island. In je bil izgnan na otok. He was bound, if you will, like Satan will one day be bound. Bil je zvezan na nek način, uh, kot kar bo Satan. He, he escaped. In je pobegnu. And what did he do? In kaj je naredil? Come back and say, I'm sorry. Je rek, prišel in rekel, no. žal mi je, ne. He rose, he rose up another army. Ne, drugo vojsko je vzdignil. Until he was ultimately defeated at the Battle of Water, Waterloo. Dokler ni bil končno, dokončno poražen v bitki pri Waterloo. That's kind of the picture of what the book of Revelation says will happen at the end of the age. Tako sliko vidimo v uh, razodetju na koncu časov. Satan will be bound. Satan bo zvezan. While he is bound, the earth will prosper and be blessed as it was intended to. In ko je dokler je zvezan, bo zemlja prosperirala in bila blagoslovljena, kakor je bila but, namenjena, da je. But just as Adam and Eve who lived in a perfect, perfect environment and walked with God in the cool of the evening had a perfect relationship. Ampak tako kot kar Adam in Eva, ki sta v popolnem okolju živela z Bogom v popolnem odnosu. God allowed the serpent into the garden to give mankind a choice. Je Bog dovolil, da kača v vrtu, da človeštvu možnost izbire. They must be given a choice. More, mora, bi da, mora biti dana izbira človeku. There is no true agape, no true love if there's not choice. Ker ni resnične ljubezni Boga brez da da na voljo izbiro. And all of these people and nations that are living on the earth with a resurrected Christ, They, they, the Satan's been bound. They, they, they're given no choice. There's no evil operating in the world. In če bi, uh, uh, če ne bi bilo nobene izbire, ker ni nobenega zla na zemlji, ljudje se ne bi mogli odločati. And so God will give all of these people now, this third category of people, He will give them a choice. In zato bo Bog dal tej tretji kategoriji ljudi končno odločito. Satan will be loosed. Satan bo sproščen. And multitudes, just like the original perfect Adam and Eve, living in a perfect environment with a perfect God, the vast majority will rebel against the Christ. In nožice, uh, celo velika večina se bo uprla Kristusu. Zavedeni. Do you suppose that God knew that when He created Adam and Eve and they'd given a choice, did He know that they could re- and would rebel? Ali je Bog vedel, ki je v stvaru človeka Uh, z možnosti odločitve, da se lahko upreta. Of course he did. Seveda je vedel. But he saw the end of the story. Ampak videl je konec zgodbe. He knew that those accusations that were made in the heavenly realm, even though one third of the angels rebelled, all the angels were defiled by accusation against the Creator God. In te stvari, ki so se zgodile v nebesih, ta upor angelov, uh, čeprav je se, se se samo eden najprej uprl, so bili vsi angeli one pod... Third. Uh, ena tretina je posta- prišla pod vpliv teh, teh, uh, tega zla. All of them were defiled. And God, could God have crushed Satan in the rebellion on the spot? A bi lahko Bog zdrobil Satana v tem uporu na mesto? Of course he could. Lahko bi ga. But the accusations would remain. Ampak uh, obtožbe so bile narejene. And it could even look in the eyes of many of the angelic realm that look, this even supports the idea that he is not God- righteous. He crushes the rebellion. Anyone that disagrees with him, he crushes him. In to ne bi, ne bi bilo pravično, če karkoli se mu upre, Bog tako je zatre. In God says, no, I have, a, I, have the, I have a store, I have a plan. In Bog je rekel, imam načrt. I'm going to let this play out. Dovolil bom, da se to, ta igra odigra do konca. I'm going to work through the seed of woman. 
through the seed of the woman. Skozi seme žene bom deloval. I'm going to make a covenant with a man named Abraham. In bom naredil zavezo s človekom po imenu Abraham. To his sons. In njegovimi potomci. Out of that I'll birth a nation. In iz tega bom ustvaril narod. And out of that nation I will touch the ends of the earth. All the nations of the earth will be blessed. In iz tega naroda se bom dotaknil vseh koncev zemlje. Vsi narodi bojo blagoslovljeni čez njih. And in the end I will give everyone that's ever been born an opportunity to choose. In na koncu bom dal vsakemu človeku, ki je kdaj bil rojen, možnost, da je izbere. And in the final battle of Gog and Magog, in v končni bitki Goga in Magoga, Satan will be so thoroughly exposed in the eyes of the angelic in the in the heavenly realm. He will be so completely exposed. Vosatan pred angeli tko očitno izpostavljen. That there will not be one question left in anyone's mind that our God is righteous and that Satan has been a deceiver from the beginning. In da ne bo no benga vprašanja več v njihovih mislih da je Naš Bog pravičan in da je Satan bil prevarant od začetka. In the very last event will be the great white, the great final judgment, judgment day. In zadnji korak bo dan končne sodbe. And Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire. In Satan bo vržen v ognjeno jezero. And all his rebellion will be thrown into the lake of fire. In vse njegovo uporništvo bo vrženo tja. All those angels that rebelled in the beginning. Vsi angeli, ki so se uprli že na začetku. All of fallen men that's chosen to rebel. In vsi padli ljudje, ki so se odločili prej. Bo do vrženi tja. Hell, Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire. In peku in podzemlje bo sta vržena v ognjeno jezero. And every final trace of sin and rebellion will be erased from God's creation. In vsak končen, vsak preostala sled upora in pokvarjenosti bojo vrženi v ognjeno jezero. And then the Lord will bring to pass the words that he spoke. In potem bo gospod izpolnil besede, ki jih je govoril. We'll hear it one day. He's going to say to all of us. Rekel jih bo vsem nam. He's going to say, behold. Rekel jih bo, glej. I make all things new. Delam vse novo. One of my favorite verses of the Bible. En mojih najljubših citatov v Svetem pismu. It's not, it is finished on the cross. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Tudi ta dokončano je na križu je zelo dober. But it's not the final words of the story. Ampak niso končne besede Boga. We like to finish the story with happily ever after. Ker hoče zaključati zgodbo z srečno do konca dni. Yeah, the Lord's not going to use a Hollywood term happily ever after, okay? No, no, he's got something far better. Ampak ne ta, kakor je v Hollywoodu vse dni življenja, ampak velik, velik bolj. He's going to say, behold, I make all things new. On bo rekel, glej, delam vse stvari nove. And you and I will rule and reign with him forever and forever. In ti boš lahko vladal z njim na veke in veke. So, I'm just submitting this to you and those that are watching by Skype, those that are watching later by video. This is, I, my intention is to open up a conversation. To predstavljam sem, ki poslušate in gledate video. Odpiram s tem možnost za pogovor. I believe this is a conversation that needs to be had. Verjamem, da je to diskusija, ki je potrebna. I think we should not avoid the subject. Mislim, da se ne bi smeli zogibati taj temi. And I think there's too much silliness and nonsense being taught in books being published today on the subject that are nonsense. In mislim, da je dost neumnosti v raznih knjigah na to temo, ki so ne smisel. So I believe this storyline and this application and interpretation of Scripture has profound theological implications. Verjamem, da ta predstavitev in razlaga ima globoke teološke posledice. This would answer some of those difficult questions that, quite honestly, theologians have not done a good job of answering. To bi odgovoril na mnoga težka vprašanja, na katera teologi niso mogli dobro odgovoriti. What's happened? This third category. I think we can easily understand the first category. A believer dies and goes to interim heaven and ultimately the new earth. Kaj se zgodi s to tretjo kategorijo ljudi? Razumemo dober prvi dve kategoriji. I think we can grasp and understand what happens to an unbeliever who rejects Christ. Razumemo, kaj se zgodi z verniki, ki sprejmejo Kristusa in kaj se zgodi z neverniki, ki ga zavrnejo. But I'd like to open the conversation, what happens to this third category, which I believe is by far the largest category today and throughout history, is these multitudes and countless billions 
who have never been given a choice. Ampak odpiram pa govor o tej veliki skupini ljudi, o množicah, ki niso nakol se mogli odločiti za ali proti Kristusu. And is finally I just want to recommend two two books that have been a great encouragement to me for those that desire to maybe dig a little deeper as to what life will be like on the other side in eternity. The Bible has an enormous amount to say, more than you can imagine. Za tiste, ki želite več kopat po teh po tej tematiki, in sveto pismo veliko govori o tem, bi rad priporočil dve knjige, ki sta mi bile v blagoslov. One of my favorites is is simply the entitled Heaven by Randy Alcorn. Ena od mojih najljubših je ma enostavno naslov Nebesa, avtor Randy Alcorn. And the other book is entitled All Things New. The author is John Eldridge. In druga knjiga ma naslov Vse stvari nove, avtor John Eldridge. Read these books and you'll be absolutely amazed and overwhelmed with the joy as to how much the Bible has to say on the subject of eternity and the age to come. Če preberete te knjige, boste prevzeti z veseljem nad tem, koliko veliko ima Sveto pismo zapovedati o, o dobi, ki prihaja. Ok, I think I've given you something to think about, I hope. Mislim, upam, da sem vam dal nekaj za glodat, za razmišljat. I hopefully upam, not offending anyone. Upam, da nisem koga v žalu. I'm not trying to be dogmatic or I'm just opening up a conversation. Ne poskušam biti dogmatik, samo odpiram pogovor na to temo. Could there be a new and fresh way to look at some of these scriptures and passages? Ali je lahko nov in svež način, da pogledamo na sveto pismo? Can we get many more, if not all of the pieces of the puzzle to fit together into one master picture? A lahko vse kočke sestavljanke spravimo skupaj v eno celotno sliko? Hopefully this will be a help. Upam, da bo to v pomoč. All right, let me open it up, I guess, to any questions, if we have any questions that we can maybe address. In je mogoče kakšno vprašanje, na katero lahko odgovorim. vprašati, Rimljanom dve opisuje tudi, čeprav razumem to, tretjo skupino ljudi, ki opisuje pač pravi pa apostol Pavel, da bodo svojni po motivih srca. Tudi tisti, ki se nisu srečali, če sem jaz to prav razumela. Ali gre to za to tretjo skupino ljudi? Ali je to... I believe it's, it's, it's the second category of people uh-huh. that that's speaking to more directly. Yes, yeah, because which is the second group? The second group are, are, are people who have lived and to who so have had a presentation of God's truth. So so uh-huh. God has revealed himself and However, it may be through the direct preaching, it may be through some other means. Direktno, uh-huh. pridigo, pa druga sredstva, TV, and Paul talks about that, that our own hearts can condemn us. No one in, can say it. Paul prav donaša lastna srca nas, nam pričujejo. But that's, that comes with a presentation of the truth. Ampak zato pa rabaš prezentacijo resnice, da se ti to zgodi. Imagine, imagine the billion, billions of people there si ljudi, who are brought up in, who are brought up in, in uh, Hinduism. Ki so v hinduizmu, you know, completely different concepts. Čist druge koncepte imajo. Yeah. So, I would say that's probably speaking more to the category. Da varjetem, da je to druga kategorija. Mm-hmm. Še eno vprašanje, če mm-hmm. lahko. Ja. Seveda. Um, Vsak malo sem deset vprašanj. <laughs> Veliko različnih posnetkov je na YouTube o teh o tem pri, pač prihodu Jezusovem, ki bo prišel kot on YouTube about Jesus return. Kot ko pride kot uh, tat v noči. He comes like a thief in the night. Ehm v tem uh, razlagajo različni ljudje to sedemletno obdobje, najprej treletno obdobje in po miru in treletno obdobje in po uh, like three and a half years of peace and then mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Če bi lahko mogoče to malo razložiti? Yeah, um, I've, I've tried to stay away from some, some of the teachings that are common today. Yeah. Izogibil sem se teh popularnih učen. 
this last 50 years or so there's been this very very popular zadnjih 50 let je bilo zelo popularno uh, especially with the writing of about I think 80 million copies of a, a series of books called Left Behind. Milijonov izvodov knjig serije Left Behind. Ostali so zadej knjige, je bilo napisane. A great many churches and denominations have embraced this idea. Sprejelo te ideje. It doesn't come from the word of God, it comes from, Ampak, from books, fiction. To fikcija, knjiga, to nima veze z Božjo besedo. Or, or with scriptures that are taken out of content. Ali pa oziroma so citati izvan konteksta. So this idea is that there is going to be before the coming of the Lord, ta ideja, da pred gospodovim prihodom, there will be a seven year period of tribulation. Da bo neka sedemletna tribulacija, stiska. Ne? And these things are going to happen in... In da se bo takrat nekaj dogajal. Okay, one of the problems with that is... En problem s tem je to is nowhere in the New Testament do you find it seven years. Nowhere in the book of Revelation does there any seven years. And as we see in the passages, when they say peace and safety, like a thief in the night, when you least expect it, that doesn't sound like a seven-year tribulation period such as the world has never seen before. It doesn't, it just, the scriptures do not, do not connect. But it's very popular. And honestly, many, many Christians, they've never heard anything else. They think this is, this is what the Bible teaches and this is what they believe. And of course, in the seven in your period, a, a, a Antichrist will rise up. In Paul, kao da se bo odvignu Antichrist v teh, v tem času sedmih let. You know how many times the word Antichrist is used in the book of Revelation? A veste, kakrat se uporab Antichrist v razvodetju? In the book of Revelation? Kakrat je on omenen v knjigi razvodetja? Not once. Niti enkrat. Doesn't exist. Sploh ne obstaja. It's taken out of the epistles of John. Ampak je vzeti iz Janezovga pisma. And it's taken out of content. Totalno izvan konteksta. John tells you what he means by an antichrist spirit. He defines it. Janas ti definira, kaj je duh antikrista. And he says, and that spirit is working in the earth right now. In prav, ta duh operira na zemlji, prav zdaj. Not 2,000 years in the future. Ne bo prišel čez 2,000 let. In a seven year period before the coming of the Lord. In potem bo zavladil se v tem obdobju sedmih let. Se potem lahko pričakuje, kdaj bo ta tihi prihod Jezusa približno? Well, Jezus je rekel, če jaz ne vem, če jaz ne ne morem povedati, če moj oči je edini, kaj ve, kaj bo kaj še lahko rečem? No, I will say this. Jesus says, as he's teaching on the subject, he says, you fishermen, you know, yeah, you know, you look at the sun and setting and you know what kind of weather there will be tomorrow. How can you not know and spiritually discern? So I don't believe that we can know the day or the hour. I, I do think the scripture gives us insights as to the season. Sveto pismo nas pouči, da lahko sezone in čase prepoznavamo. And when they all saying peace and safety, in ko bodo vsi govoril mir in varnost, that's that's a something to to listen, pay attention to. Potem moraš dat pozornost. There's been no peace and safety in the Middle East since Israel became a nation again in 1947. Ker odkrije leta 1248 Izrael postal narod, še ni bilo miru pa varnosti na zemlji. I'm sure you heard the news last week. Now the United Arab Emirates have now joined Egypt and Jordan and becoming political allies and opening diplomatic relationships, peace and safety with Israel. In zdaj so odprl diplomatske pogovori, mir in varnost v Izraelu, kjer so se združali Arabski Emirati, Egipt in Jordan skupi za mir v Izraelu. And they're saying now that many, many other Arab nations will now follow. In zdaj pravijo, da mnogo arabskih narodov bo temu modelu sledilo. Could there be peace and safety in the Middle East? Ali je možno spostaviti mir in varnost v bližnom vzhodu? That would have my attention. To bi men dal kar veliko zamisel. So we can't know the day or the hour, but we can know the season. Ne moramo vedeti dneva točno in ure točno, ampak lahko sezone in čase prepoznamo. Še kaj? Še kdo ima vprašanje?
Če sem prav razumela potem, ko bo v razvedetu piše, da bo uničene, popolno uničene zemlje, ampak predno se bo to zgodilo, bo Jezus vladal na zemlji. Pred tem dogodkom... Before the earth will be destroyed, Jesus will rule on the earth, before the earth will be destroyed. Jesus will destroy the earth in his judgment when he comes back in the second coming of the Lord. He is coming to judge the earth with fire. V drugem gospodom prihodu, se prav, ki jaz pride nazaj, bo zemlo uničil z ognjem. Okay, and he will destroy the earth. Takrat jo bo uničil. The wicked will go to hell. Zlobni bo došli v pekov. And the righteous will be alive and remain, they will be resurrected. Te, ki so pa pravični, bodo pa ustali. Paul says, like in the twinkling of an eye. In kot bi trenil z očesom, je rekel apostol Pavel. All those that will come back with Christ. Vsi, ki se bodo skupaj s Kristusom vrnili, in te, ki bodo takrat, ki jaz pri nazaj še na zemlji, bodo skupaj vzeti na oblaki z gospodom in bo to velika združitev. Abraham in David in Isaiah bodo vsega 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 bodo dobili novo telo preden mi, ko bomo, če bomo še živi takrat na zemlji. But this will all happen in a twinkling of an eye. Ampak to se bo tako hit zgodil, kot kar z očesom trenoš. Ne, and then we will rule and reign with Christ. Te bomo vladali in kraljevali s Kristusom. First in heaven. Najprej v nebesi. And then on the physical new earth. Potem pa na novi fizični zemlji. No tega nisem najbolje razumela prej, kdaj pa potem prihod novega Jeruzalema na zemljo. In when will the new Jerusalem come to the earth? In Revelation chapter 20, v razvedetju 20, it doesn't specifically say, ne reče specifično, we see that the new Jerusalem is on the new earth, ampak vidimo ga na novi zemlji. And the nations that we talked about, the nations have now been on the earth for some time, In narodi so zdaj že na zemlji nekaj časa. Jesus is ruling and reigning on the earth, the nations. In Jezus vlada in kraljuje tem narodom na zemlji. Goat and sheep nations. Tem, ki so narodi kozli in narodi ovce. Yeah. And that will probably occur around before or right around immediately after the second resurrection, the resurrection of the unjust. To se bo zgodil kmal za drugim ustajenjem. Tam okoli, ne? Before, after the second resurrection. Mal, okol, prej ali pa po drugim ustajenjem. Because the Bible says then that he will rule on the earth for a season. Ker piše, da bo takrat nekaj časa, potem on vladal na zem. Who will he rule? Komu bo vladal? The nations that were resurrected. Narodom, ki so bili ustali. Yeah? So first, we are a part of the first resurrection. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection. Blagor nam, ki bomo del prvega ustajenja. We have no fear of the second death. In nam se ni treba bat druge smrti. We will have a judgment, it's called the judgment seat of Christ. Ker mi pridamo na sodni prestol Kristusa. Okay, and that word judgment is not judgment like in, you know, are you going to stay in heaven or not? In ta toni beseda sodba, ki bi določila, bo šti lahko v nebesih. Ja, it's actually, it means the bima seed, it's the seed of reward. Bima sedeš, kar pomeni sodba, ki s kjer se delijo nagrade. We will not stand before the great white throne judgment. Zato mi ne bomo stali pred belim sodnim prestolom. We have no fear of the second death. In nimamo strahu pred drugo smrti. Because we are part of the first resurrection. Zato ker smo del prvega ustajenja. And our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In so naša imena zapisana v knjigi, jagnetovi knjigi življenja. On earth we will have free access in and out of the New Jerusalem, the capital city. In na novi zemlji bomo imeli brez plač oziroma svoboden vstop v Novi Jeruzalem. But the rest of the world will not. Ampak ostal del sveta ne bo mogel not. Yeah. I know this is a little, a bit overwhelming, there's a lot of information. Mogoče je velik zdaj na enkrat informacij. But think about it. Ampak razmislj to. In the slides I've given you many, many, many scriptures to go through and look and read and study. Lahko si vsi, ki na Zoom gledate na YouTube, pa vi, ki ste tukaj. So I'm challenging. Lahko pogledate PowerPoint, ki bo zraven video, si ga lahko downloadate, pa pol preučite. I have many scriptures in the notes, in the PowerPoints. In veliko bo učenja in citatov noter za vas. 
and I would just like wise Bereans study these things to see if they be so. Yeah. plemena. I, my understanding used to be that the first resurrection only involves the one forty-four thousand, twelve thousand from each na uh, Jewish nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the so in Revelation chapter seven, maybe John yeah, sees he sees this these uh, twelve thousand uh, saints coming from the 12 tribes of Israel. Vidi 12000 svetnikov iz 12 plemen Izraela. Ne? 144000. Kar je Okay, these are prophetic numbers. To so preroška števila. And they have prophetic meaning. In imajo preroški pomen. Uh, this is not talking about the literal t uh, people coming from the 12 tribes of Israel. In ne govori dobesedno o 12 tisočih ljudi dobesednih iz 12 plemen. Why? Zakaj? How can this not be literal? Zakaj? Kako, kako? Zakaj to ni dobesedno? Because 2,700 years ago ker pred 2,700 let, let nazaj, the northern kingdom of Israel was scattered to the ends of the earth. There is not and has not for 2,700 years been a tribe of, of, of Reuben or a tribe of Dan. What you see in Israel in the, in the Middle East today is not the 12 tribes of Israel. Those are remnants from one tribe. In fact, at the time of Jesus, Jesus didn't come to the 12 tribes of Israel. He came to gather them because they'd been scattered like sheep to the ends of the earth. Who did he minister to? Only a small remnant of the house of Judah, the southern tribe, and from Judah we get Jews. Samo iz majhnega plemena ostanka iz naroda Jude in iz Judo, iz plemena Jude, potem dobimo Žide. And some from the tribe, also the southern kingdom was Benjamin. In še en del poleg Judoga plemena iz južnega dela izraelskega plemena so bili pa Benjamin. So who are these people Jesus was ministering to, preaching the gospel to? Who, who crucified them? Who are these people? They were remnants that came back from Babylon. Se pravi, komu je Jezus to pridigal, to je bil ostanek ljudstva, ki se je vrnil iz Babilona. A small number, majhno število, about 53,000, 53,000 Jews, Židov, in some from Benjamin, in Benjamin so, and they grew and multiplied, in so rasli in se množili, and that's the people Jesus came to. And that's why they were asking him over and over again, Jesus, will you at this time restore Israel? Ne? Because they knew the prophecies. But he couldn't physically restore them and gather them because they are scattered to the ends of the earth. They don't know who, the, who their descendants were. They have no idea of their ancestry. God knows. No one in the world can stand up and say, I came from the tribe of Reuben. Not one person in the world. No one knows. God knows. And he's working his covenant in the earth. So when John is seeing this in the book of Revelation, this is prophetic. It's not talking about 12,000 from these 12 tribes because 10 of the tribes have been scattered to the ends of the earth. They don't exist anymore. At the time of Jesus. And everyone knew that. When they were reading the book of Revelation, the first century church, they knew that this was prophetic. They knew this was not literal. Yeah, it can't be literal. 
These tribes haven't existed for 700 years. Now Jesus will gather them together in his body. Those that believe. Right? Does that help? Uh, what, what about a number? These are prophetic numbers. So 12, there's 12 uh, disciples, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 stars over the, the head of the church in Revelation 12. These are speaking government. Yeah. And so, what does that mean? No one knows for sure. I think... This will probably be end time apostolic prophetic ministries that will be released in the year prior to the coming of the Lord to help gather the harvest the harvest in before yes, the end. Yes, I think that the apostles of the church when Jesus came to the earth to gather the harvest on the earth. I could be wrong. But that would be my guess. But I can tell you 100% for sure, that's not literal. No more. še dal povabilo vsakmu, ko to gleda, mogoče na TV-ju ali tukaj v živo. In kjera, upraviš se, kjera kategorija si ti? A si že predal življenje jevsi? Ali še kar razmišljaš? In ful nevaran je, če si zašel v tole dvorano, to je ful nevaran. Če si prišel na naš YouTube kanal, je spet ful nevaran. Zakaj? Ker si slišal evangelij. In zdaj se moraš odločiti, haliluja, kaj boš naredil z Jevosom. Glede na to, kaj z njim narediš, tam boš preživel večnost. Bog te ljubi, cel povzetek evangelja je v Janezu 3.16. Bog je tako ljubil svet, da je dal svojega edinora enega sina, da se nihče ne bi pogubil, ampak bi imel večno življenje. In zdaj v Rimljanih 10 prav, če v svojem srcu veruješ, da ga je Bog obudil od mrtvih, in ga zusti priznaš, za svojega gospoda, se pravi gospodarja, boš odrešen. Se pravi, kaj moraš narediti? Verjem v Jezusa. Verjem, da je On na križ odnesel tvoje grehe. Ker drugace noš mogu odrešiti. Čim slišaš evangelij, pa zavrneš Jezusa, to je najhujša kategorija ljudi. In na boj se mogu zgovarjati, da nisi vedel, ker si slišal evangelij. Tako da donac, kjer ko si, Red skupaj z mano jev, svarjamo vat. Prosim te, pri ti v moj življenje. Jaz te sprejemam za svojega gospoda in rešitelja. Amen. A je to želja tvojega srca? A ti nekaj v srcu govori, da to naredi? Če ti pol mol zdele skupaj z mano, kjer ko si, če še ne poznaš jevsa, sem reč mu jevsa, svarjamo vat. Priznavam, da sem grešnik, ker se ne mora sam odrešiti. Prosim te, prid v moj življenje. Bod zdaj ti moj gospod in rešitelj. Ampak to ni dost, Hariloja. Zdaj vsak dan se odlod za Jevsa. Odrešen si, če donos obreh, če si sprejel Jevsa, si odrešen, ampak velika nevarnost je, če ne postaneš njegov učenc. Kaj si ti bo zgodil? Hodič te bo prevaril. Hotel bo, da rečeš, ma ja, to je bilo brez zveze in da zavržeš Jevsa. Noben ti ne garantira, da boš do konca hodil z Jevsom, če ne postaneš njegov učenc. S to prva stvar, ber Božjo besedo. Začni v novi zavezi. Najti brate in sestre v Jevsu, ki isto verjamajo v Božjo besedo. In potem skupaj z njim rast v Jevsu. Hallelujah. Svet bo čitalje bolj zloben. Duh tega sveta, duh Antikrista je že na svetu, je rekel Janez. In on zavaja ljudi proti Bogu, proti Božji besedi, proti Božjemu ljudstvu. Zato edina šansa ti je, da ostaneš z Jevsem in da postaneš njegov učenc. S to vsak dan Udeležuj se zbora svetih, božjih ljudi. Druž se z Jevsom, ber sveto pismo, haliluj. In deli to še naprej z drugimi. Mogoče lahko podpreš naše delo, tako da se naročiš na naš YouTube kanal. Podel to še s kom drugim naprej, haliluj. Lahko nas tudi finančno podpreš, da še naprej širimo evangeliju. 
Jaz verjamem, da karkoli investiraš v evangelij, se ti bo vrnal nazaj. Ampak dober je v poslednjih časih, jaz verjamem, da tako kriza prihaja, da ljudje ne bojo imeli za jaz pa zapiti. Piše, da bo kos kruha več vreden, kaj zlato. In zato je važen, vse, kaj investiraš danes v Božje kolestvo, v Božje žel, že na zemlji, preden je uspeli nazaj. In si se naučil živeti v Božji ekonomiji. Zato imaj odnos s Bogom. Hvala vsem, ki ste prišli. Hvala Boštjanu za prevod. Je dober prevajal. Super. Hvala. Hvala Rodrigo, tukaj kato snema. Hvala. Hvala ti, Rodrigo. In bote blagosloveni. Hvala. Širite evangelje okolj. Amen. Veseljte ste, da ste odrešili. Amen. To je največji žur, da poznaš Jevsa. Hvala. In Darko, skupaj bomo z Jevsom kraljevalo novi zemlji. Amen. Amen. Slavu.